Welcome to the Superfast Touch Designer tutorial series. In this tutorial, we'll create a surface texture of an alien planet or a sand dune. You name it. In Chapter 1, Overview. In the first network, you're going to create the X and Y coordinates using a grid SOP. This is quite simple, and you will learn a new concept that we haven't covered in my previous tutorials. Converting these grid coordinates to a channel operator to get the grid information as channel data. Once I create this part of the network, later I will explain you what is happening here and how it works. The second network converts 2D patterns into data to create Z-axis information, which we will use later to modify the instances. You can use any image from the internet, but for this project, it's best to use black and white geometric patterns. However, feel free to experiment with other images. In summary, this process will generate new Z-axis coordinates that will create a displacement effect giving the impression of a 3D volume. The rest is very common and you already know it. This is the classic scheme for making instances using SOPs. And finally, you have a very simple post-process network with a feedback and a couple of color correction operators. So let's start this network from the beginning. Chapter two, network. All right, let's start by creating the first network. First, you're going to create a constant operator and place it here. Now go to an editor and look for a grid SOP and place it here. Right click and look for SOP2. With this operator, you are going to convert the grid into data channels. After this, create a select chop and then a pattern chop. Later, when you review the parameters, I will explain what you're going to do in this network. In the next network, you're going to create a movie file in top because you are going to import any image. Then, connect a transform top. After this, put a blur top because you need to smooth that texture. Then connect a null just to organize the network. After the null, connect a composite operator. Additionally, create a new noise operator that you connect directly to the composite top. After the composite, integrate a level top and then create a last null. Which you rename as Z map. Finally, after the null, create a top to operator and then a shuffle. Perfect. Arrange this network a bit so everything fits here. This entire network will be to create the Z axis. It's important to merge these two networks to have X, Y, and Z in one place. For that, create a merge chop and connect the last operators of both networks as follows. Finally, create a null operator and rename it to instances. Let's move on to the next network, the SOP instances. This is quite easy. Your particle, which you are going to repeat, will be a box SOP, so place it here. Then connect a geo directly to this box and create a PBR material, which you drag directly to the geo and select the material. Finally, add an environment light. You already know this quite well. Add a camera and a render top to visualize everything. Then create a movie file in and drag it into the environment map and select this option. Let's create the last part of this project. First create a null here and then you're going to create a feedback top here followed by a transform operator then a level and to finish a composite where you connect as follows. Drag the composite to the feedback so that everything is well connected. To finish this composition, insert a level here followed by an RGB key to have a black background and finally the output. Perfect. You have a network created and you won't need more operators in this project. Chapter 3. Parameters. All right, let's start parameterizing. Select the constant operator and create a new channel that you will rename as, as TX and TY. Perfect. Select the grid SOP and use the following parameters. Now use the select chop to only keep TX and TY coordinates selected, which are the coordinates you are interested in using from the grid SOP. In pattern, select random. Perfect. Now I will explain what is happening with these three operators. The pattern chop is adding random variations to the TX and TY coordinates of the vertices that we obtained by using the grid SOP. This means each instance will have its position slightly randomized along the X and Y axes based on the random values generated by the pattern chop. 
When we use the add option in combine channels, it means that we are adding these values generated by the pattern chop to the previous values generated by the grid SOP. Okay, let's continue. Go to the network below and call an image. You found this pattern on the internet and all you're going to do is select transform top and animate the Y axis using apps time.seconds divided by 15. and set repeat in the tile section. With this, you ensure a movement pattern. Go to blur top and select the following values. Go to the noise and use this values. Leave the composite with the blending mode average. Perfect. Now select the level and use the following values. In the top to operator, select group for image in the crop tab. Finally, go to the shuffle and select the method sequence channel name. Now, I will explain what this does. This network is doing the following. First, the top to chop converts the image from ZMAP into chop channels using the full image option in crop to ensure that the color values E, R, G, and B of every pixel are captured. These channels represent the image's data. Then, the shuffle chop, set to sequence channels by name, reorganizes these channels based on their names. This means it takes all the values from the first channel and places them in a new channel sequentially and does the same with the rest of the channels. Continue here. Everything remains as it is and you move to the instances network. Select the box SOP and use the following parameters. Now go to the PBR material where I forgot to create an operator to make a texture for the base color and the emit of the PBR. You're going to create a ramp top. You want a ramp to have this specific texture which is very easy to do and will allow you to have a metallic reflection due to the white color you are using here. Also use these values for the phase and period. This texture will only be mapped in the emit map and also in the color. Select the PBR and copy the following values. Remember to select the emit and change it to white so you can see what you are doing here. With that, you finish the SOP network and move on to the last one which will be the post-process network. Select the translate top and set this values to create some movement. Then use the level and set the opacity that will regulate how much feedback you will get. 0.9 is good. Go to the composite operator and select add. And finally select this level and copy the following parameters. For now, you are not seeing anything, but don't worry. You are close to seeing the first result. I forgot to put an HDRI here, so go to the movie file in and select an HDRI. I have some that I downloaded from HDRI Haven. Now, you just need to set the instances to see the first result. Before we continue, thank you all for watching and subscribing. Reaching over 4,000 subscribers in two months has exceeded my expectations. I'm excited that so many of you enjoy my content. However, 72.7% .7 of viewers haven't subscribed yet. If you find my videos helpful, please hit that subscribe button. It makes a huge difference in helping me create more high quality touch designer tutorials. Let's work together to reduce this number. Chapter four, settings. All right, let's go with the main settings. The first thing is to check the resolution you're going to work with. As always, you know I like to work in 1920 by 1080. Make sure the project has the same resolution here then you can select all these operators and choose the option parent panel size. With this, you ensure that all have the same output resolution. Finally, you have to start making some mappings for it to work. Select the first constant operator, which will basically mark the size of instances that you will have in the entire composition. The first thing you will do is use these values, 500 by 500, which correspond to a very high number of instances, totaling 250,000 instances. Test on your PC to see how many instances it can handle efficiently. You will reference the values of the constant 
to three specific operators. Start with the grid SOP as follows. This value corresponds to the number of columns and rows the grid will have, and therefore, at each intersection between a column and a row, an instance will be placed. Then, go to the initial movie file and operator. Set it to custom and map the resolution from the constant. Perfect. This resolution will affect the entire chain of operators you have here. Do the same with the noise operator. Set it to custom and map the resolution from the constant. With this, you ensure that the number of instances and the number of samples you are going to use for each instance is consistent. If you have different resolutions, it is possible that the GEO operator will show an error and stop rendering the instances. Now, the most awaited part, we will reference the X and Z values we created in the previous network to the GEO component. But before doing that, let's rename some parameters for clarity. Select the pattern chop. Go to channel and set TX and TIE in the channel names options. Then select the top to operator. Remove the alpha channel, which you are not going to use, and rename RGB to this values. Turn on the instances in the GEO component. Map the instances in the translate OP and select the parameters as follows. Now, use the same instances to manipulate the scale by referencing this chop to the scale and selecting these channels. You can now bring the geometry closer using the camera and you will see that we have cloned these tiny boxes based on the X, Y, and Z axes we created in the previous two networks. You need to change two more things. Select this two operators. In the option, pixel format, choose 32 bits, float RGB. Finally, to finish this composition, go to the pattern chop, where it says combine channels, select add, and in pattern amplitude, set at 0.05. Now just play with the camera and you already have this project ready. I have a pre-recorded camera with some positions. It is one of my custom components called Save the Cam with pre-recorded camera positions. So I will place this component here and select some camera positions on the go. Chapter 5. Better Alternative. Now, let's see a way to create a parametric patterns. I just created a simple program in processing to generate 2D patterns that will be much more useful for this project because we have the ability to parameterize the 2D image and obtain many more possibilities. Of course, you can download more images, manipulate them within Touch Designer, and explore various results. However, if you find it interesting, I suggest you check out this alternative I made. For this, you need to install a program called Processing. If you don't know anything about this program, I have left a link in the description. For now, I'll just say that it has many similarities with Touch Designer, but its environment is entirely based on programming code. I will open the program for a moment so you can see it. What I will do is use a component in Touch Designer that captures the window displayed by the program in processing. I will drag this window to my second screen and now create a new operator called Screen Grab. In the settings, look for the processing window I just opened. Now you have the screen here. Edit the crop options to hide the window borders that you don't want to include. Next, I have another component that allows me to connect Touch Designer directly with processing using a protocol called OSC. This will enable us to manipulate the parameters of processing directly from Touch Designer. If you want to use this mosaic pattern generator, you can find it on my Patreon, where I will guide you on how to install it and what you need for it to work. Connect the screen grab operator directly to the translate. Now you have this pattern. The interesting thing is that by using these parameters, you start to modularize the entire project in a generative and parametric way. To see it well, I will make this larger so you can see how the parameters generated in 2D combine with the final composition in Touch Designer. For example, the space between each element or the rotation gives different shapes. The scale can be larger or smaller. And you can also change the color to white and the border to black. Increase the size of the border and see the pattern changing.
you can add a bit of alpha to the border and make it bigger to overlap. This gives us many more forms to play with. Let's go back to the black fill to show one last thing. The white border, leave the alpha at its original values. Let's make some camera changes. Here, you can see different patterns. Also, the interesting thing about manipulating this texture is in the composite operator. I'll leave it here to remind us, but before that, you can play with the noise values to generate different sensations in the deformation. You can animate the noise, and now you have movement. Okay, my favorite part is the composite top blending modes. If you use different types of mix, you get a different final result. That result generates a different map. For example, if you select pink lights, it changes dramatically. If you select brightness, the result changes a lot. An interesting one is dimmest, which generates a different result. You can go to the level top and also play with the parameters. You can use the step option and the composition changes completely. These project files and all the components for using processing are available on my Patreon. That's all. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and see you in the next one.